this series so far. Just to wrap up this video, we're going to talk about the common issues across all of these products, where I think that they, we can go in the future, and some of the things you need to look out for as well as you're implementing any of these solutions, or a combination of a few. So the first thing from a common issues is really this notion of where I've described groups in Outlook, Yammer, Microsoft Teams, and SharePoint, all these things have got a single pane of glass UI that's kind of not integrated. Teams is trying to bring in the other products. Groups was attempting that as well, but I feel like the way that Groups in Outlook is going is that that's really going to be a niche for those email distribution list type, time scenarios. And so I think the biggest problem we're going to have is that how do we know where people are collaborating as a team? Have I got to go into each individual pane of glass, or can I just have one unified single pane of glass that kind of views all of these things together in a way that isn't just search oriented is giving me nice dashboards and an ability to kind of have activity. And that brings me into my second kind of common issue we see, which is how do I keep up? Not only do I have like four different areas I need to look in um, to start or even respond to things, but if all those things are creating signals and activities, it's going to be really, really hard to keep up for me and understand where my teams are integrating. So I think that's going to be the second common issue there on that side of things. And then the other kind of third thing is not only like the dashboard that I start on in the morning or the activity, but it's also how do I go and discover it at a later date? Where am I going to go to search, which is going to allow me to get all the data from all those different repositories in one simple search result view? And right now there doesn't seem to be an answer there. So they're like the three common areas that are kind of affecting people in Office 365 when it comes to team collaboration. And I believe that's why organizations will really have to pick one to start with and stay with rather than kind of give a free-for-all and encourage people to go wherever they need because people will kind of not be able to take advantage of the fact that there's content in lots of different places. I imagine they're working on this, but that's definitely a big thing for, for us. Now, how to get started? Well, I would start small, find some groups that kind of maybe are going to find this easier than others and try and encourage adoption in those areas. The community managers um, kind of role within an organization really proves success of kind of integrating technology into organizations. And the Yammer community members have done a great job of sharing some of the success criteria they do in that. And there's some great content on Fast Track, which is a service that Microsoft provided as part of the Office 365. I would state at a community, le uh, community level within your organization of what products you're going to use and when they should be used and maybe have some guidance on those kind of things. If you can turn things on and turn things off, try and control how people can go about things. So for instance, if you decide it's too early for Teams, you, can, you don't have to give them the licenses to be able to even get in to use Teams in the first place. I do believe that although technology should be easy and it should be intuitive and it should be easy to get started, that sometimes training, nugget videos, emails that send out from that community manager or whoever owns those particular initiatives in the organization can lead to a better success of the technology that you deploy. Don't feel like you just turn the button on and grant licenses to something like Microsoft Teams and assume people are going to know what to do with it. You might need to do some scenarios and show some ways that other teams have done well and used it properly, and that might go, oh, I can use this on my next project for these particular things. Much like when we have SharePoint or OneDrive for Business, those things traditionally aren't always a success without some kind of adoption model over the top of it. Technology doesn't fix the entire problem. It gets you a long way there, but it doesn't get it all the way. What am I looking for in the future in 2017 from Microsoft? I think the biggest one is we need some bold moves. We need to have a better, clearer, definitive answer to what those four products will have as a future, how they will work together, but how they are differentiated. I'm, I'm, I don't believe that this high-velocity team concept that they're tagging Microsoft Teams with really does differentiate enough from Yammer. I think you can have a high-velocity team in Yammer just as well as you can in uh, Microsoft Teams. And so I feel like there needs to be a better, bit of a better answer on those types of how we delineate between the four. And from the blog post I've written and these YouTube videos, you can see there's a lot of questions and confusion on this out here in the customer base. So I'm hoping that Microsoft will get better at aligning and making that definition of what the future looks like and what we should be betting on a lot better. I wrote a post in 2013, I believe, when I was at AppPoint where we decided to stick with SharePoint, and SharePoint news feeds and that way to work internally in our organization over Yammer for a variety of different reasons. And then unfortunately it was deprecated and so we had to switch over to Yammer at our point in that space. And that was something that, you know, I, it was, uh, if you read that post, there was a lot of detail and reasoning behind it. 
But often I think it'd be better if Microsoft kind of got in front of that and, and explained where they're going to go, e even if they're worried about some of the fallout of saying we're going to deprecate things or put our focus or efforts on that. In a lot of cases, it's fairly obvious that the focus is there. For instance, Teams has come out of nowhere, really, for a preview product that's as rich as it is. Um, but I believe that, you know, you can see that Groups in Outlook hasn't had as many features introduced into it and is missing things like uh, a Mac Outlook support because I believe a lot of those resources got put on the Microsoft Teams work. So it'd be better if Microsoft were a bit more transparent in how they feel like that future is going to go. Now, the other big ask I have is, we should really be looking at, well, what does team collaboration look like outside of the Office 365 sphere? What is things like teamwork.com and Slack and Asana doing that we could kind of introduce into Office 365 as maybe feature requests and user voice as a community contribution, but also in terms of what things are working when they're deploying these things out into organizations. I'd love all your feedback on this stuff. Please post on the YouTube, post on Hyperfish blog at blog.hyperfish.com. And please make sure you're following us on the YouTube subscriber channel there and just click the subscribe button in, in Hyperfish on YouTube and follow us at Hyperfish on Twitter. We'd love to hear from you. Please keep in contact.